Holy God, may the words that come out of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts, may, may it all be pleasing to you. And may you touch us by the power of your spirit this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. How long ago was it, Donna? When was the, the heart attack? Uh, February of 16. February 16th, so it's been over like two and a half years ago. Okay, so I'm just going to, some of y'all may not remember or, or may not know, but uh, Bill had a heart attack in February of 2016. Uh, they took him to the medical center. He had a stent put in. A they, cath. A cath. He did a cath. They didn't do stents, so they just did a heart cath. Okay. And, and they sent him to the Woodlands, right? And, and they had open heart surgery because he, he needed, well, bypass, I guess, bypass surgery. Three bypasses. Three bypasses. So and a valve. they did that. Yeah, they did all that down there in the Woodlands. And that, that evening he had a stroke, or was it the next day? That evening he had a stroke after the surgery. And, and y'all, I mean, he was in critical, critical condition. On a ventilator for weeks. I don't know how, just how long. It seemed like a month or so. It was more than a month. More than a month, like six weeks, something like that. It, it was a long time. And uh, I mean, the, your preacher we went down there a couple times, I know, and, and saw him. And, and I, I walked out of the room thinking, you know, it, it will be a true miracle if, if he gets out of here. I mean, I really thought that. It, uh, it was, and look, at, and here, here you go. And he made it, you know. Of course, we were all praying for him. You know, uh, we were lifting him up. We were trying to reach out to him best we could. Of course, they were down there. It's hard to do much. But, uh, but we certainly were praying. And a lot of people were praying. Y'all's church was praying. I mean, there are there Christians all over Texas, at least, and beyond, that, that were lifting Bill and the whole family up. And, and he made it to a rehab hospital, right? And, and, and you know what? He, he made it home. Made it home, and he was in a wheelchair, if I recall, uh, you know, at that point in time. And, and, you know, it wasn't too many weeks later, he came walking in the church. And now you wouldn't even know he had had that. I mean, I wouldn't know. I mean, you may be able to tell at home or something like that, or what, you know, the stamina may not be as much or whatever. But I mean, none of us would know that, would you? If you just looked at Bill today. I, I, I submit to you that, that that was a miracle. I'm just going to say it. That was a miracle that God, you know, healed Bill. Lord have mercy. I, your preacher had pretty well thrown in the towel. So, I mean, it's just true. From what I saw, I was like, man, alive. You know, and, and thank God I don't make those decisions. Right? <laughs> Not that I wanted it to happen, but I thought, wow. So, you know, God is still at work. Uh, God is here, God is at work, and God is, is, is loving us constantly. He never quits. Um, so, the pain of it all, y'all. Y'all don't need me to talk about this too much, do you? I mean, we've we just gone over, I don't know how many folks we've added to the prayer list today. Right? I mean, and, and it's an extensive list to begin with. Uh, we have concerns don't we? They're, it's around us. People are, people are hurting. People are ill. People are in accidents. Uh, people lose their lives, right? Um, and there's this whole subject area called theodicy, which is kind of a philosophy about who God is and, and, and why do bad things happen to good people. All that, right? And, and you know, there's been a lot of ink spilled about all that. And, and, and at the end of the day, who can say for sure what it's all, what 
what all that encompasses and how that all works, except to say, if you recall our, our, our fallen nature, right, in the garden, that, that picture pretty well sums it up. Um, we had everything. We had a bird nest on the ground. You know, y'all ever heard that? Okay. Bird nest on the ground, right? In Eden, we had it all, right? I mean, Adam and Eve had it. They had it made in the shade. One thing they weren't supposed to do, and eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and they couldn't help themselves. The devil tempted them, and they, they took the bait, right? I mean, they took the bait, and as a consequence, we're having to deal with all this stuff now. Uh, the illness, uh, cancer, uh, car wrecks, floods, typhoons, tornado. I mean, all of that junk uh, is not, well, it's really our doing, though. We can talk about that another day. If they wouldn't have done it, we would have kind of thing. So, I mean, we're all guilty, right? I mean, we, we're all guilty. Um, but as a consequence of that, you know, they were thrown out of the garden. They were cast out. And the old devil stirs up stuff still, right? I mean, he's around and he's stirring up stuff. And, and uh, you know, I don't know who's doing what, really and truly. But uh, we have to deal with all this brokenness from living in a fallen world, right? But the good news is... God didn't leave us in this condition. He sent a Savior into this world to take our fallenness, our brokenness, our sin, our rebellion onto himself and crucified on the cross. That through him we might be healed of our broken condition. That we might be saved. That we might have the breath of God in us. That breath, the Spirit, the Spirit of God that lives in us to help bring healing and wholeness and to give us the hope that we'll be there with Florence one day. Okay, and it'll all be over. This will be a bad dream, right? And there won't be any more sorrow or pain or, or, or cancer or, or natural disasters or accident. All that will be, it, it'll be gone. And we will be forever with this loving God who loves us and wants the best for us. But we've got to go through this, this, this broken world. In the meanwhile, but there's hope. Right? There's always hope. God didn't take hope away from us. Uh, and he wants us to love each other right? and, and pray for each other. In the middle of this broken mess, we're to pray for each other, we're to reach out to each other, we're to support each other, we're to encourage each other, we're, we're to point each other toward the cross at, at every opportunity, right? That's, that's the idea because this is, Jesus is our hope, right? He's our hope. And, and he's in nothing in this world. I, I let me, uh, this thing kind of came to me. It, what do you think God would rather have for you? Have you win the lottery? Or have a strong relationship with him? <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, we all want to win the lottery, right? Or, or you know, have somebody bequeath us a, a, their estate, you know, and all this kind of stuff, and we're just like, woo, party, right? Well, God, I think, would rather us have him, have his son. I mean, this was the most precious life this world has ever known. That's in all existence, the son, right? The son of the living God. And he allowed him to die for us, y'all. What a price. What a precious price. How precious is the blood of Christ that was poured out for you and for me. Um, okay, so James talks about us praying for each other and all and, and, and loving on each other.
each other and anointing each other with oil, and, you know, saying prayers. Uh, now, I, 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 there's a there's a caveat here. What happened to James and, and you know everybody that was there with him at that time? They're gone, right? I mean, they they died somewhere along the way. I mean, James was martyred. I mean, he was stoned to death for faith in Christ. Right? I mean, so we still have to, you know, we don't, we're all, not going to be over here forever, right? And, and, and we don't get to decide when that is for anybody and all that sort of thing. Uh, and and I, sometimes when we pray for, for someone, I'm, I'm and it doesn't work out the way we want it to. Have y'all ever prayed for anybody and it didn't work out like you wanted it to? Right? I have. Uh, and maybe we'll ask the question, well, why didn't God heal so-and-so or whatever? Um, I, I, let me flip that on you and say, what might have happened had we not prayed for them? You know, maybe they wouldn't have been around as long. You know, maybe maybe their life was extended significantly because we did pray. Maybe they, you know, I don't know all those questions. All I know is God is here with us. God is working here in our midst, and God is loving, and He is He's going to work everything out. But we all, like Florence. One day we're going to, you know, we're going to have to cross over the river. But it's, Jesus said when he was talking to Lazarus' sister, was it Martha, I think it was, you know, I'm the resurrection and the life. Those who die and believe in me will live again, and those who live and believe in me will Never die. Never die. So I'm going to suggest to you that when that last breath left Florence's lungs, when was that? Saturday? I guess? Friday. Friday? Okay. The, 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 the Jesus or angels or came and got her spirit, her soul, was taken to be with the king in that instant. She wasn't there at the moment of death of her body. She was gone. She had already vacated the premises. And Paul says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? And he said, it would be much better for me that I just go on and die and go be with the Lord. But he's like, no, but, but for your sakes, I'm still sticking around so that I can help train some of y'all and maybe save some more folks, right? So, all right. The power of prayer. There was a, there was a, a lady, her son, her, I mean, her daughter was in Matthew's class at, uh, charter school. We knew these people. And, and she and I were, we were at Java Jacks one morning here about five or six years ago and, and started talking um, on September the 11th. She was in I believe it was Wilmington, Delaware. And her, that daughter, who was a year or so old at the time, had a, had a grave, grave illness. Cancer, I believe, of some sort or another and was not expected to live, was laying there in the hospital, you know, hooked up to everything, and the doctors kept coming in, and she said that her phone rang that morning on September the 11th, 2001. Some of y'all may remember that, right? Uh, their phone rang in the room, and, and she picked it up, and it was somebody, she didn't know, some lady on the other end said, uh, is this, and I forget the little girl's name, but I, I'll say Kristen. Is this Kristen's mom? And she said, yes, it is. She said, 
bring her to such and such church tonight at 7 o'clock. There's a healing service. And, and just bring her there tonight. And, and she hung up. The lady hung up before she could find out anymore. And she's like, what was that all about? And so, you know, the doctor started coming in and they had their, you know, solemn faces and all that. She said, can I take my daughter to this healing service tonight? And they're like, I, the doctor told her, I'll have you arrested if you try to take this girl out of this hospital. She will not survive. Well, as the day wore on, and of course the planes hit all those buildings shortly thereafter, and, and everybody was walking around in a daze, uh, by that late that afternoon, uh, she got permission to unhook her daughter and take her to this prayer service at this church. Now, this is a Catholic church, if I recall. Anyway, she, she puts her in a wheelchair and gets her up there and, and, and carries her up the steps. And the pace, place, of course, 9-11, it's packed, right? It is packed out. And, and, and one of the men out front who was an usher said, I'm sorry, ma'am, there's no more room. And, and, and she turned and started to, and she tried to appeal to him, and he just said, she just lowered his head and, and held his arm out like that. And she turned to leave, and a lady, a nun, walks up and said, are you Chris? Is this Chris? And she said, yes. And she said, I have a place for you on the front row. And she took them up to the front row. And, and they prayed for that kid. And, and that kid was healed. She was healed. She was in Matthew's class, you know, at, at charter school. I don't know. I lost track of them over the last six or seven years. Don't know. They had graduated from high school. I don't remember her name. Uh, Caleb doesn't remember either. So, anyway, is God able to heal? <laughs> Is God able? Is God able to heal? Oh, oh, if he's God, he's able, right? I mean, there's no question about it. But there's, we all have this doubt, right? We have this sense of doubt kind of that, that hangs over us like a dark cloud sometimes about. Let me tell you what somebody else said back in Mark chapter 9, verses 22 through 24. This guy um, brings his son, this demon-possessed, to the Lord. And here's what he says to Jesus. The Spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. That's what he said to Jesus, right? Jesus responds, what do you mean if I can Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Amen. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. I still have doubts. I, I know you have the power, but I just don't know if you're going to do that for me or not. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. yes. That's a prayer I can pray. Right? I believe you're able, but Lord, help me where I where I help my unbelief. Um, but so that's what I offer to you today. Believe that God can heal. Believe that He is able, um, and, and trust Him with it. You know, put it in his hands. Keep putting it in his hands. Every time you try to drag it back and worry over it and fret over it and, 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 and get anxious about it, which I do, <laughs> keep giving it back. Give it back. You know, keep giving it back to him. Because uh, all that doesn't really add a, a, a nanosecond to anybody's life. If anything... It takes it away from the one that's worrying and fretting all the time, right? So, uh, trust and walk by faith. Um, and, and 
do seek medical treatment. You know, I'm not one of these people that, you know, just faith healing without, I mean, no, get, get whatever the medical profession can do for you done too. You know, I mean, God has blessed us with uh, great medical care. Man, I mean, Bill's had three surgeries on his eye, you know, uh, and we've been praying for him and, and we're, we're praying that you're done with it, right? And that it, it, it is completely healed. Now, he's getting there, not quite there yet, so we've got to keep praying, right? Um, just know that God is present, God is working, and God is loving, and he is going to work things out. There are times um, when we, you know, uh, somebody's not going to recover, right? I mean, and, and how do you know when that is? Uh, there are hard times, hard decisions to make. Uh, sometimes the medical profession will, will tell us one thing and God will tell us something else. You know, I, um, I, I don't have all the answers, but I, I do know that God is able and, and we need to trust him. And I believe that he will lead us to, to what we need. What's the, he says, knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find, right? I mean, that, that that's not just some warm, fuzzy statement. That's, that's directions for life, in my opinion. And, and whatever the circumstance, knock and the door will be open to you. Uh, very seldom does God just give, give us, a, you know, let us sit there on our tuffets and give us a revelation about, you know, what we're supposed to do. He wants us to figure it out, <laughs> pretty much. And, and trust Him and pray through things and let him lead us, right? I mean, so, um, anyway, okay. And righteousness matters. Uh, in, in this, the prayers of the righteous avail much is, is one of the uh, interpretations. The prayers of God's people, he hears. I mean, God hears the prayers of his children. So, uh, Hebrews 10, 38 says, And my righteous ones will live by faith, but I will take no pleasure in one who turns away. <clears throat> so I, I think it's incumbent upon us to try our best with God's help to live the way he wants us to live, to trust in him, to look to him at all times and all places, to, to, to try to, you know, not be, we're all going to be tempted, but, but do our with God's help, don't fall off into sin. If you do happen to fall off into it, you know, repent and get back, get your feet back on the right pathway. Uh, he wants us to be holy, right? To be like his son, Jesus. Uh, Romans 12, 22, don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you'll be able to test what God wants for you. And you will agree that he want, what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Uh, one of the worship leaders at, at the conference we were at, her name was Carol Stratton. Uh, she had a beautiful voice, uh, led us in where we could play piano really well and all that stuff. Not, maybe not as good as you. <laughs> um, but anyway, she was, a, she was just one of those vivacious, you know, bubbly people, you know, always had a smile on her face, uh, right? And, and, and she and her husband did one of the presentations, and, and she said in that presentation, and showed pictures, she was diagnosed with stage 3 lymphoma 12 years before, I believe it was 12 years before. Um, went through chemo, six months of chemo, right? Went through Went through all she had all the effects, all the, you know, side effects and all that stuff. Her hair, showed a picture of her without her hair. You know, all that stuff that happens. But she said that she was, she was starting that. She got the diagnosis and all that. She didn't know, you know, she was praying for an answer, right? Like, like we all would, you know. And she said she, she prayed this prayer. She said, God, what, what are you saying? This. You know, what, what do you have to say in all this? I want to know what you have to say. And she said two people within 24 hours came to her and gave her this verse. 
One of them lived, you know, hundreds of miles away, and one of them was her next door neighbor. They didn't know each other. Okay. They, the, the neighbor was a, a, a nurse, and she knocked on the door, and she said, I don't know how to tell you this. God, you know, I'm a Christian, but God never speaks to me, you know. But she said, he spoke to me and told me to come give you this verse. And her dad had emailed it to her, I think, earlier in the day. And it was Psalm 50, 15. And it says, call out to me when trouble comes. I will save you and you will honor me. And there she was, 12 years later, giving God the glory. Right? Trust in the Lord. Pray for one another. That's why we do this list, you know, every week. And I trust and hope you'll take this to the house and that you'll put it wherever you pray and that you'll, you know, pray over it, you know. Right? These folks need this, this prayer. You know, we all we all are at times we'll need it, right? I mean, we never find you can always pray for, for me and my family anytime. If you don't, if you run out of somebody to pray for, I, I'll put my name on the list. So uh, anyway, uh, and, and you know, hold on to the Lord. Don't let anything come between you and him, like sin, you know, anger, unforgiveness. That sort of thing. Uh, clear the slate so that so that there was, you know, God will hear your prayer and God will answer your prayers. Okay. Does anybody need to be anointed with oil today and prayed for? I think that would be an, a fitting way to finish this service today. I'll, I'll I'll leave that offer open. If you want to come forward during this uh, closing hymn. And, and I invite, if anybody comes, you know, I invite the church to come and lay hands, and let's lay hands on them and pray for them, okay? Is that all good? It's in, yeah, this is a Methodist thing too, y'all. <laughs> this isn't Pentecost or anything like that. It's in, the, it's in the United Methodist Book of Worship. There is a healing service in there, okay? And it, it includes anointing with oil. So uh, it, it's a, in the Wesleyan tradition too, so. Pentecostals and the Catholics don't, aren't the only ones to do that. So we just trust God and we want to follow His plan for us to be healed. Right? So would y'all uh, come and lead us in our closing hymn, Rescue the Perishing.